Once again, a warm welcome to you. Anti-apartheid activist and uh, former Foreign Affairs Deputy Minister Aziz Pahad has uh, passed away. Pahad was 82 years old. He died at his Johannesburg home surrounded by his family. In July 2023, the Pahad family suffered the loss of two brothers, Junaid and uh, Esop. Uh, Pahad was Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs from 1994 until 2008 and also served as a Member of Parliament from 1994 until 2008. Pahad left South Africa shortly after the Rivonia trial, which saw struggle icons including Nelson Mandela, Govan Mbeki and Walter Sisulu being sentenced to life imprisonment. Pahad returned to South Africa from exile in 1990 and he became the deputy head of the ANC Department of International Affairs in 1991. Aziz Gulam Pahad, a suave and humorous top diplomat, is a former South African deputy minister of foreign affairs and an anti-apartheid activist who played a significant role in the establishment of the anti-apartheid movement in the United Kingdom and Europe. Aziz also played a significant role in public and secret transition talks in Europe with different role players in order to end apartheid that eventually led to the unbanning of political organizations, the release of Nelson Mandela and dialogues and discussions that led eventually to a free democratic South Africa. In post-apartheid South Africa, he became a member of parliament and a deputy minister. This is how his older brother, Aesop, describes him. Your brother, Aziz Pahad. As a wonderful human being, with a great sense of humor, very witty, he has a, a strong tendency to always have one-liners. So in the course of a conversation, he would just make some statement and everybody would start laughing. Because it would be a witty statement about somebody or about something. So in that sense, his own personality led to him having a lot of friends. And even people who were not friends, but they would know him. And he always would greet anybody even if he didn't know them. He would always greet them with a big smile. He's... Um, politically, he's very astute. This is how his brother Aesop remembers their childhood. We used to sit on that street corner when we were younger. When we were older, of course, you went to a lot of parties, um, shabins, um, and so we had a very active social life and uh, Aziz was, had a very active social life and he really had no problems in chatting up women, he was quite good at it. Aziz Pahad served as Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs in former President Tabombeki's first term. During that time, Aziz played a key role in shaping the ANC government's policies. He earned respect both at home and abroad. The engagements and the mentoring uh, that should take place, uh, don't leave anything to chance, uh, mentor them. And Aziz believed in that. I can tell you, anytime he walks into that Dirko, you go to the canteen, whatever you had gone there for, and sitting there around the canteen, there will be a queue and a lot of people around him. People asking questions, wanting to know this or that or the other. And he said, but no, I'm no more in government. He said, no, 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 no. You are Andre Gromiko. That was his nickname, Andre Gromiko. Was the longest serving foreign minister of the Soviet Union. So Aziz was regarded as a Andrei Gromikov, South Africa. During his stint at the Department of Foreign Affairs, now Department of International Relations and Cooperation, or DOCO, Aziz won admiration from many senior officials and staffers. Then began really what I think was um, a relationship of a mentor, a, 
somebody who, who really that I could reach out to taught me a lot about the ropes of foreign affairs. And, uh, and, and I realized that Aziz was Aziz to everybody. There was no senior, there was no junior person. And, and, and Aziz just interacted with a bit very easily. And, um, and as a DG, it was somebody that I could run to any time. Aziz was very much a leader, the way we saw him, because he guided us on how to be effective diplomats, along with the minister and the DG in Saluba. So it was a dream team. As Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister, Aziz played a prominent role in South Africa's attempt to stop the US-led attack on Iraq in 2003. Everybody without exception links the Palestinian-Israeli situation to the war against Iraq. Now, I mean, you can debate whether they're right or not, but that's the perception, not only in the street, but within governments. And so everybody is anxious that we all work together to help create a conditions where we do get a solution to the issue of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq without going to war. Uh, we get the sense that nobody is committed to going to war for war's sake, but that we need to then support the processes that will ensure two things. One, that the Security Council Resolution 1441 is fully implemented, which demands or which necessitates that the Iraqi government cooperates fully with the inspectors. Uh, the inspectors' reports have indicated that they've had full cooperation in, in terms of log logistics and in terms of um, what's it, logistics and um, uh, processes. But as you saw from Blicks and Better Days uh, reports, they've asked, especially Inspector Blicks, have raised a whole lot of questions that they're seeking answers to. Uh, it would be the view of the South African government, which reflects the non-aligned movement's view, that uh, the Iraqi government must give those inspectors their full cooperation. Aziz was part of an inner circle of ministers and deputy ministers who enjoyed a close relationship with former President Thabo Mbeki, dubbed as the class of 96 by his political opponents. He was among some of the national executive ministers and deputy ministers who submitted their resignations soon after Mbeki's resignation in September 2008. He's credited President Mbeki for his own political development. He had the fortune to then be able to work with Tabo in Becky. And I guess Tabo had the fortune to work with him. And they worked very and they still work very closely together. But they formed quite a formidable pairing inside the ANC in terms of international politics. Aziz's long stint in government and especially at the Department of Foreign Affairs has left a lasting legacy as a committed, well-respected and hard-working top diplomat. As the longest serving Deputy Foreign Minister of South Africa, Deputy Foreign Minister. But he was so well-rounded that uh, he could have been a foreign minister, but uh, he was kept there for a purpose. And he stayed in that and managed to make the impact that he had been able to make. Amongst his domestic and international accolades, Aziz was a recipient of a 2021 honorary doctorate from the University of Pretoria. Aziz Pahad has been a true servant of South Africa for most of his life. In 2022, he was awarded the Ubuntu Oar Tambo Lifetime Achievement Diplomacy Award in recognition of his role in forging peace and conflict ridden countries in some parts of the African continent. Aziz's passing will leave a lasting legacy in his illustrious career within the diplomatic community. Zoleka Kotashi for SABC News.
let's get some reaction then on the passing of Aziz uh, Pahad. We're now joined by political economic uh, analyst Terry Bell uh, joining us uh, for that uh, conversation. A very good evening to you and thanks so much for joining us. Uh, good evening to you too. All right, let's start here by talking then, Mr. Bell, about, you know, uh, how Aziz Pahad uh, should really sort of uh, be remembered. Uh, just listening to some of what has been said um, since we got uh, the news, we hear of a man who is referred to as, as a mentor, as someone who had great humility, was humble, um, didn't really uh, care about senior and junior lines and was someone that was very approachable. Uh, what do you have to say? Well, I'd say certainly so. To my mind, of course, as is always, and I, I first met him almost exactly to the month 60 years ago in Fordsburg. We subsequently got together in, in the 1960s with Paolo Jordan, uh, Tabo Mbeki, et cetera, in the ANC Youth in London. And uh, he was, I always remember him as having an incredible sense of humour yeah. and being a desperate party animal. He was until <laughs> the day he died. And... Um, that is, is very much my memory of him. We were at university together in, in London, uh, studying international affairs. Uh, although we had, we always, even from then, we had our political disagreements. We remained friends. Yeah. Um, and he came back, of course. Uh, we had even more political disagreements, <laughs> but we still continued to stay in, in touch. He said to me once, when I've retired from all this business, I'll give you all the inside information. But he never did. And, and what are some of those uh, disagreements? You know, I'm sure, I'm sure there's some that you can uh, share with us. Um, we might possibly agree with you or agree with him. But, you know, what were some of the you know, sticky issues that, and I mean, I think in, in any friendship, there's always, in any real friendship, there's always, uh, you know, disagreements. But what were some of the things that uh, you kind of uh, didn't necessarily see eye to eye on? Now, these weren't on, on um, these were definitely not on, on friendship grounds. These were on ideological grounds. Yeah. I just felt that... Uh, the ANC was drifting from too far to the right, that uh, it was, we needed to have a really clear social democratic program, and that when things started to move, particularly after 1996 and the growth employment and redistribution program, etc., I felt that given what the statements that had been made, among others, by Aziz and the rest of them, um, I thought, well, he, they're going the wrong way. They keep thinking they can change things from inside, but they can't. Mm. And so I became something, I suppose, where I was regarded as something of a licensed dissident. Yeah. We shared another thing in common too back in 1966. All of us, us is myself and others, were banned uh, in South Africa. Nothing we said or published could ever be published and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And the hilarious thing which we always laughed about initially but then afterwards when he became very well known didn't want to mention it mm. was the state went and banned him under the name of Pahad Aziz alias Dacha. Yeah. Uh, we talking about uh, things that were uh, published there is a book um, about uh, Aziz Bahad and, and, and one of the main things that the book uh, speaks to is you know the negotiations to end apartheid and it, it gives an insight um, into you know the fact that there were these official talks that we all obviously uh, know of the official negotiations but that there were you know sort of secret um, uh, discussions that paved the way uh, for dialogue uh, between um, the ANC and what was then uh, the apartheid government and it talked very much about some of the role that he played and, and I would assume that you know very much about uh, that uh, particular time the book of course being um, insurgent uh, diplomat can you talk to us um, about that in that time and I would I would think that this is something he was he, he might have been quite uh, proud to have you know I, partaken I in well, in 1983, you see, that's something that I, I disagreed with. I felt they should not be talking, particularly through Neil Barnard, who was the head of the security establishment. Mm. And Aziz and Tabo Mbeki were involved directly, I mean, in Geneva in, what, in 1983. Mm. I heard about some of these things because at that time I was editing a publication called Africa Analysis, right. and we knew a lot of what was going on. And I was worried about this because I thought... The last thing we need, I became a bit of a Nuremberger, if you like, a bit of a purist. Yeah. I felt there is no way we should do deals with these people because we have enough problems of our own with corruption in exile mm. to now get involved in corrupt nationalist, organiza racist organization who are now losing control but cannot and cannot maintain, but we do not have enough power to take over. Yeah. The last thing we should do is to try and get into bed with them. So that is basically where our disagreement lay.
Yeah, and, and, and I mean, what was her, his reaction to, you know, your viewpoint? I think that there's uh, some good, uh, you know, um, viewpoint to what you, what you had to say. I mean, and I, and I would imagine that he did, you know, give you an ear, even though you might have uh, disagreed. I mean, what was his point of contention there in terms of where he uh, sort of disagrees uh, uh, with you? He felt like, I suppose a lot of the others did, that I was a bit of an idealist. Yeah. And he'd say, no, 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 we have to, we have to compromise, etc. And I would say, no, I don't think we should. There are times where one does compromise, but not on principle. And I think you're compromising on principle. At which stage, usually he'd say, oh, well, let's just have another drink and forget about it. <laughs> Is that what you did uh, a lot of the time? Uh, share some drinks. What drinks are we talking oh, here? Yeah. <laughs> what was your poison? <laughs> Well, his his was his ended up as as uh, Jameson's Irish whiskey. Uh -huh. I tended to, uh, I tended at that stage to be drinking beer, but I I, I then changed later. Yeah. All right. So you know we've talk, we've spoken words. we've spoken about you know your political uh, differences and where you know you met and all of that, but. Um, just on a personal note, I mean, as, of course, you now say farewell to uh, an old friend, a good friend of yours. I mean, how how do you um, remember him and how would you remember him? And how would you, you know, how would you want South Africans to uh, remember Dr. Aziz? Well, I would like to remember him on a personal level. I don't want to think of him on a, you know, we'll have all the talk about the political level, what he did, etc. They'll be glossing over all sorts of things. There'll be correct and incorrect statements. I'm not interested in that. Uh, on a friendly basis and on a personal basis, I like to remember him as a warm, friendly, very funny. He had a great sense of humour. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, and no matter our differences, although sometimes, as I said, they got quite heated, um, we remained friends. And that's, that's how I would like to remember him and say farewell to him on that basis. All right, uh, Terry Bell, a great pleasure talking to you. And thank you for giving us uh, your time and sharing uh, some of those uh, stories and uh, your memories uh, of your friendship with Aziz Pahad.